Welcome to Bar Chart's webinar on sector analysis as a way to find solid trading candidates. Today's session, we're going to look at a top-down analysis approach where we'll look at the broader market, drill through sectors and industry groups to find uh, trading opportunities uh, in individual stocks. Uh, I'm your guest presenter, John Rowland, and my goal for today is to show you the tools that are inside of uh, bar chart to help you do this top-down analysis and to bring some of my 30-plus um, years of um, industry experience to help you um, find some insider uh, industry information or tactics uh, to allow you to uh, develop a, a better trade plan as you employ some of these uh, skills. As always with me is our moderator, uh, Gene Baker. Welcome, Gene. Hi, John. How are you today? Doing very well. Thank you. Uh, Gene's going to watch the chat for me, guys, and help answer any technical questions you guys have and uh, send those questions along to me. I'll try to answer them as uh, we continue through our webinar. Uh, again, I just want to remind you that today uh, we are talking about a webinar which is for educational purposes and that trading and all trading is uh, risky and has an element of risk to it. And it's important for us to understand that as we go through uh, our webinar today that uh, these in no way should be taken as an endorsement or a recommendation to buy or sell any particular stocks. And that anytime I show a stock or show a strategy or a component inside of the webinar is for illustration purposes and demonstration only. All right, so here we're at our main web page. And before we get started, I just want to remind you all that all of our webinars are recorded and that you can, um, if you are present today or you signed up for this, you will get a link at some point later today or tomorrow to allow you to get to this particular webinar. But you can go under the tools and the free webinars here. And these are all the webinars that we've been doing. We've been doing a series of these since about uh, mid-July. So they're all in here. So you can come back and reference those. All right. So let's get started. So where do we start? Well, we're going to start in the stock segments and we're going to go under here where it says sectors and we're going to click on stock sectors market sectors and it, here what we're looking at is the broader overall market right the uh, S&P market and its major sectors and, and this is where our comparative analysis is going to begin first we're going to reference what the S&P is doing and then second we're going to look at uh, the individual sectors and so for you can see for today notice over here to the left it says today uh, that the S&P is down 0.67 percent and that these sectors these sectors are either up or down so you can see for today uh, energy is up 1.71 percent so this is where we're going to start doing that analysis. We're going to look at what is the S&P doing and what is it, how does it rela relate to these individual sectors. So what we're seeing today is that the energy market, the energy sector is outperforming the S&P. This could give us an opportunity to look in the energy markets to look for uh, stocks that are outperforming the S&P. Now, we do have a way to look at different time frames, and we're certainly going to talk about this in a little bit more detail um, uh, today, uh, five days, right? Um, here we see communication services and technology um, have been outperforming the S&P. We could look at, you know, one month, right? Um, uh, utilities was one of the larger uh, outperforming sectors in the last month. Uh, we could look at, let's say, six months, right, um, as which one would be, uh, you know, outperforming. Again, consumer discretionaries, information technologies popped to the top. Uh, we could look at year-to-date or year, right, um, and 
do this comparison analysis. And again, depending on how I trade, what my goals are, what time frames that I'm going to look at, what style of trader, or I'm a day trader, you know, I might be looking at, you know, momentum from day to day or inside of one week. If I'm a swing or a wealth trader, you know, I might be want to look at uh, a larger or a broader period of time. And so we do have an opportunity to do that comparison too. Uh, we can look at the short term matrix, which is showing us today five days one month and three months. And what we want to do here is um, we want to kind of see a consistent performance um, uh, over these different sectors, which ones has consistently outperformed um, each one. Now, for today, you can see that energies is outperforming, but we can see that, you know, during the last three months, it's not uh, performing is actually performing very poorly. It's actually been down, uh, was down for one month. This could be a sign that uh, there is rotation into the energy markets because these stocks are relatively cheap. But what we want to do in this top down analysis approach is we want to really look for trend. We really want to look for momentum. We want to find those sectors that are performing consistently uh, from lower time frames uh, to our higher time frames. And so you can see our consumer discretionaries uh, has outperformed for three months, has outperformed for one month, um, and has outperformed uh, in the last five days. If I look at um, my matrix in terms of a longer period of time, uh, the same analysis. We want to see those uh, sectors that have uh, been outperforming the S&P uh, longer period of times. And the one that kind of jumps out to me uh, over a longer period of time is our information and technology. You can see that you know it's up 450% over a 10-year period, and it's up uh, 49, almost 50% just this year. So what we can do is we can click on that sector and it's going to take us to the sector page. At this point here, uh, there's a lot more information for us to start doing this analysis that we want to do to help us find uh, greater candidates. So the first thing we're going to look at is this chart. Now this chart here is a composite of all the individual stocks that are in this particular sector. So what are we going to use this chart for? Well, first, you can see it's really only for a shorter period of time, about three months, um, a little bit more. Uh, but we're just going to look at this as a snapshot to see what our trend is doing. What is the price movement um, in this particular sector? And then we want to find sectors that are having positive momentum or positive price movement. And you can see that this sector, you know, had a nice movement uh, from July to September, a little market correction, the whole market kind of corrected in September a little bit. And now we're, we're seeing that, you know, it's still uh, moving higher again now. And overall, you know, the trend is still up. This is a way we can kind of get a quick look at our trend. But the second thing that we're going to start looking at is our moving averages. And again, if we understand the theory of moving averages, um, moving averages tells us that in an uptrending moving average, the theory says that price, because it's a lagging indicator, price will be above our moving average. So that's a positive sign for us. As long as our stock is above our moving average, then it tells us that trend is still in control. So here we can see that the percentage of the stocks in this particular sector are trading above their five-day moving average, their 20-day moving average, their 50-day moving average, and so on. So we want to see a positive number on all these. And you can see that in this particular sector, well, for five days, only half of our stocks are above their five-day moving average. That is still a pretty positive number, right? Uh, but over longer period of times, all of these stocks or a large majority of these stocks uh, are outperforming their moving average. Okay. What we're really doing looking here is this momentum, this kind of momentum to our market. And this market, these 
this sector definitely has a positive momentum. The next thing we can look at is um, how many are making new highs or new lows in this particular sector. Again, uh, now we can see that there are 72 stocks or components inside of this sector. And we're going to look again which ones are doing well. And here we can see that, you know, 19 of our 72 are making new five day highs, uh, 16 are making new one month highs, and all the way out to six months, where we can say only uh, six are making um, new highs. Now, that's not a bad thing. It's not necessarily a good thing. All we're trying to do is compare here. What we are seeing in this particular sector is that uh, that we are making new highs in a short period time frame, but we haven't made a lot of new highs in longer period time frames. That could mean that our stocks are con continuing to rally and there's still m room for them to grow, or it could be a sign that our momentum uh, is slowing. So which time frame is the most important, right? You know, there is a lot of debate among momentum traders, but there is empirical statistical evidence that shows that sectors or stocks that outperform or lead a, the broader market for six months uh, will, in probability, lead or outperform for the next six months, okay? And so um, we'll look at multiple time frames, but six months is kind of that, you know, that um, linchpin or maybe that, that bar, standard of bar that we're going to look for to look to see if we have some positive momentum, some nice trends, and um, some greater gains. All right, and so here's the stocks that are in this sector, and you can see there's the 72 stocks um, in, in a wide range of companies and um, industries. And here's my um, Apple. We're all familiar with Apple. And again, what did we say? We want to kind of look at six months. And so I have my chart on six months, and you know, Apple has been consistently trending up for six months. So what does this mean? Well, it means in statistically, in probability, that the next six months, uh, Apple should uh, outperform uh, the broader market, okay? Now, if I have a particular stock that I know that is doing well, or I feel that that stock has been leading the market, for instance, our fangs, uh, one of the things I can do to help me find other opportunities is I could go into my price overview and right down here, it'll tell me the different indexes or sectors that this particular stock is in. And I can click on that sector And here, what it's going to show me is not only Apple in this lower subclass, but also its competitors, or we could call them its peers. So here we're on the computer mini, and here are its peers or competitors that are in this subsector. And you can see that Apple is definitely outperforming uh, HP and 3D systems. But what other ones? that Apple could fall on? Well, electronic computers, right? And again, you know, you, some of these names are very familiar to us and we do see that Apple is outperforming us. Again, so here we're doing that uh, peer uh, analysis, all right? Okay, so the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna go to um, industry rankings. And this is really where we're going to start separating the wheat from the shaft, right? Uh, where we're gonna break down our sectors into industry groupings. Uh, uh, getting that, they're, they're really the teeth of our comparative analysis. So the first thing I do wanna point out to you is under our industry groups, we do have this little box here. It says shows industries with 10 or more stocks. And so I would recommend to start this process to click this on because otherwise, you would be looking at all the industry groups that have maybe less than 10 stocks. And what we'll discover later in our uh, session is there are a lot of industry groups that might only have a handful of stocks in it. So we're, we're kind of 
narrowing this down as well. We're just going to look for industry groups that have 10 or more. Okay, so this first page right here, what are we going to look for? Well, something called our weighted alpha. And this is going to be very important for us when we do our comparative analysis. And you can see that the weighted alpha measures how much a stock has risen or fallen over a one-year period with a higher weighting towards weight the recent prices. So we're going to give more onus to most recent price action versus that of uh, la latter uh, price action, excuse me, former price action. And so I've gone to the help section and it tells you how the groups are put together. But I just want to stop here on the weighted alpha, right? And just read a couple lines here for you, right? Uh, bar chart takes a stock and it looks at a one year period, it weights it, assigns it, it weight to more recent activity, right? And that a stock whose price has risen over a one year period has a positive alpha. A stock whose price has not changed much over a one year period will have a very small alpha and a stock whose uh, price has fallen over a one year period would have a negative alpha. And that uh, weighted alpha is limited to the amount of how much we can put towards that recent price action uh, and then eliminates uh, these large price jumps. So, you know, you've probably seen some stocks, especially some cheaper or penny stocks that might, you know, triple or quadruple in price in like a couple of days. Well, this will kind of mute that uh, price action. So uh, that's one of the things about which is nice about our weighted alpha. Okay. Um, so how is the industry groups ranked? Well, it's going to be ranked by our weighted alpha. The weighted alpha change will tell us how much uh, a particular group has changed in terms of its weighted alpha uh, for today. Okay, so you can see uh, if your stocks groups or your industry groups uh, have a not only a positive alpha turn over a week, but here we've seen it on a day-to-day. -day. So this has changed when I was looking at it this morning. You know, a couple of these industry groups actually were up today, but now some of them uh, are down a little bit. Um, and the market's down a little bit as well, too, right? Uh, notice that our first industry group is called Sector Top 100 Stocks. We'll come back to this one um, a, a little bit later in our discussion. So the first group that has the most a positive alpha is our retail home uh, furniture. So I can click on that. And here we have another chart. And this chart is different from the chart we saw in the sector chart. This chart is an average of our weighted alphas of all the stocks in this particular group. And again, this is kind of a snapshot for us. So we want to see positive price momentum. And we do see that, you know, we do see a positive price momentum. But I do want to point out that in recent weeks, recent months, uh, you know, we're starting to see an acceleration of price. Again, why is the alpha really high in this group? Well, because many of these stocks that are in this uh, industry group are performing, outperforming um, in the last month or so, right? So this number here is the average weighted alpha for the whole group. Now, there's a caveat here, right? We want to look at this average weighted alpha, but we also want to look at the stocks that are inside of our group. And what you should notice right off the bat here is that one of our stocks inside of this group's weighted alpha is up almost 1,400%. I mean, that's a huge number. And our weighted alpha of 194, if we look at our individual stocks, none of those stocks in this group has a weighted alpha or an alpha that is greater than our weighted alpha. So what we're seeing here is one stock is skewing the total alpha of this group. Now, that doesn't mean it's a good thing or a bad thing. and just want you to be aware of that phenomenon that could be uh, a characteristic when we look at this average alpha. So what we're going to do from this point here is on this view page, this main view page, we're going to look at our weighted alpha. 
In this case, it's 1,387. And we're going to look at our 52-week change. Again, remember that the weighted alpha is heavier towards most recent prices. And here we can see that the momentum of this stock has probably been greater in the shorter term than it has been in the longer term because the weighted alpha is a lot higher than the change in 52 weeks. If I click on the chart, And you can see that, right? This stock has gone from, you know, $1 or $2 to $14. But in the last month, uh, we've gone from $6 to $12, you know, a 50% increase in just one peer in one month's time, a much more greater price action uh, in a very short period of time. That's why it's alpha is a lot higher. Okay. So again, that doesn't mean that we wouldn't look at this stock or that stock is not a desirable stock. It's actually, it is. It has a lot of positive price momentum. So that would be one way we can do some comparative analysis as we get down to this uh, peer or competitor or component group level. Um, you know, I'm looking at a couple of these other ones here. Uh, again, you see that our alpha is a little bit greater than our 52 week. Again, telling us that our stock is accelerating in price, and that might be something that you are looking for, my momentum traders. But some of us who are trend traders who just want to catch a nice, strong trend, right, um, we might look for a very consistent price action. And so here we see under uh, William Sonoma, our alpha is 55 and our 52 week is 54. So what this is telling us is that William Sonoma is performing, but it's performing at a very steady rate, right? It's not one period of time, especially the most recent period of time is outperforming the whole time. And if we look at that stock, we will see that, yeah, this is a nice steady trending up market. I drew a little nice little red trend line here showing us here's a nice steady up market. Now I did highlight here for those of you who are pattern traders who look for price patterns, uh, this particular pattern, you will probably recognize it. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail right now. Uh, maybe a little bit of a tease for another uh, segment sometime in the future. Okay. All right, so what other analysis can we do? Well, we have our main page. We talked about our alpha. We can come in here and open that up and go to our technical analysis. And again, some nice little tools in here. Uh, our bar chart opinion, which is based on 13 different um, indicators or studies. Uh, we have our 20-day uh, relative strength. I know that a lot of momentum traders like to look at relative strength, right? We want to see a nice positive relative strength, but not an overly uh, large relative strength. Historical volatility for options traders, this is a very powerful tool for them. Um, average daily volume. A lot of times when our stock starts getting positive momentum or trend is starting to take off again, we'll see an increase in volume on a daily level. So you can use this to give you that comparison between the daily level and the 20 day, right? A performance, right? Uh, what is our market been doing over a certain period of time? Again, we already talked about the alpha and the 52 week. What I would recommend for you guys to kind of look at is let's look at the difference between our one month change and our three month change. And again, what we want to see is like either a consistent performance or if I'm looking for a more greater positive momentum in the short term, I want to see a greater percentage in the last month as it relates to my uh, uh, three months. What I also can look at is, is there a change in momentum, right? And for instance, if I look at res, um, uh, uh, 
<laughs> sorry, hardware. Some days tongue tied, right? Um, we can see that one month it's only up two percent, two and a half percent in the last month, but over the last three months it's been up almost forty-five, uh, over forty-five percent. So what's this telling us? That in the last month it's not performing as well as this whole group, and over the last three months it's only gone up 2%, which is telling us that the momentum of this stock has actually slowed a little bit, right? Now, again, that might not be a bad thing in the long run, but as a momentum trader, this could be a cautionary tale that when I look at this stock, what I'm probably going to see is either a, maybe a potential downtrend developing or that this stock's momentum has slowed severely and again you can see that this stock had a nice price movement to the upside but in the recent months you know it's kind of going sideways it's losing its momentum again not a bad thing not a good thing it's just a way to compare it uh, to its peers in this group and there's certainly other stocks in this group that are outperforming uh, this particular stock all right the other thing that we can look at is our fundamental analysis and w some of the things that we can look at is our market cap. Are we looking at a uh, small cap or a penny stock or are we looking at a mid or large cap stock? Uh, P.E. ratios, this is 12 months trailing. Um, our um, earnings per share, right? Um, again, a 12 month uh, trailing. Now, this one, uh, these two, earnings per share and P-E ratio, you know, make sure it's relevant to the group that you're looking at. You know, you know, some of our internet stocks or some of our gross industries, you know, they have either super high P-E ratios or they don't have a lot of earnings. And certainly, if you only use that as a tool, you know, you would have missed out on some of the greatest uh, uh, stocks in our you know, our lifetime and in our last, you know, last decade, you know, think about the Googles and the Amazons of the world, right? Uh, net income, you could look to see uh, if this particular stock is having a positive income. Again, you know, a lot of these growth stocks don't have income for many years. Um, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but, you know, it's just another tool for us to compare. And dividends, of course, dividends. Uh, I love dividends. I love to find stocks. I can, kind of feel like that's the uh, little whipped cream or cherry on top of, you know, finding a stock that outperforms. And we can see that under the fundamentals, you know, William Sonoma pops to the top based on dividends. So if I was going to uh, look at William Sonoma or purchase William Sonoma, notice that in this group, it's one of the only ones that uh, has a dividend. And not only does it have a dividend, it has a nice almost 2% uh, dividend. So if this was a stock that now I want to continue to watch, well, then I could add it to a watch list, either a watch list that I've already created or I'm going to make for a very particular set of stocks that I want. And one of the watch lists I created for this session, I call it the best of the best or the big mo momentum. I'm going to click on that and add it uh, to my watch list. Okay. All right. Before we jump ahead, let's see if we have any questions. Don't see any yet. Oh, here's one. Uh, the component, is it a full list or a short list? Yeah, Scotty, it's a, it's a full list of all the stocks that are in that either sector or that industry group. Okay, cool. All right. Whoop. All right. So let's go back to our industry groupings before we, excuse me, our industry rankings before we move away. Um, I also want to point out that in the industry grouping rankings that there will be some other uh, ways we can do some comparative analysis. And notice that there is ones that say ETFs, right? This is the ETFs that represent technology stocks. Uh, here's the index, the NASDAQ 100. So what we can do here in that comparative analysis, let's say I'm looking at uh, internet commerce, right? Is internet commerce 
technology or part of the NASDAQ, is it keeping up with or is it outperforming the ETFs or um, uh, the indexes? And so we can do that comparative analysis. And so there's a lot of ETFs that we can look at um, and the indexes are in here. As I go down farther, you would see a lot more. Again, you could click on the ETFs and look inside of them and see which stocks are part of their components as well. Another way to drill down, okay? All right, um, here we are on our heat map. And again, um, we can use different time frames to do our analysis, um, right? And the rankings, again, by our alphas, right? And so notice, again, retail home furniture is at the top of the list. And if I click on that heat map link, it will take me to that page that I already showed you and show you the same uh, stocks, the same components that are inside of that um, industry grouping all right now remember on the industry rankings we said that we're only going to look at industry groups that have 10 or more stocks notice here what we're seeing is that we're a lot more specific industries right we're really kind of really drilling down here uh, looking at a lot more groups right and that's because a lot of these groups uh, didn't hit on our industry rankings because they didn't have more than 10 stocks in it so one of the ones that is at the top here food and dairy products right um i could click on that and what we would discover is that there's only one stock inside of this particular very specific group um industry grouping right only one particular stock now it doesn't mean that i wouldn't look at this group or this one stock it just wanted to point that uh out to you okay and again there's our sector top 100 i'm going to come back to that in the next segment hang with me on that but again if i scroll down a little bit here let's see where they start popping up yeah there's our indexes right here's our indexes um index transport indexes let's see etfs here's our etfs consumer discretions right our etfs right um so again another way to do a little bit more uh, comparative analysis very specific groups versus the larger sector or etfs or the indexes all right okay see if we have any other questions Not yet okay good all right so let's really kind of get to the where we're going to find these greater uh, trading opportunities and we're going to go down to our industry performances now we're going to look at these industry groups and we're going to start looking at their performances and the uh, individual stocks that are in those uh, groups or industry groups. Okay, so again, one of the things I want to point out to you is, uh, you know, here's all those different groups, right? Right. Um, and notice, though, we do see over here what it says last and this is not last price for this particular industry group right it's not a composite of the price this is actually representing uh the alpha right so this is our alpha here so this last is our last alpha right and you can see how much it's up over the last six months or how much it's been up uh what it's high or low has been over the last six months or how much it's changed in one day so that is one thing that's a little bit different than you would see on other filters or views when we go through the individual stocks okay All right now the one that is particularly interesting for me and one that i think you guys should start employing in your selection 
is the sector top 100 stocks. And so what bar chart does for us here is it looks at all the sectors and it pulls out uh, the top performers, uh, the highest alphas of all the sectors. It finds the top 100 alphas over all of our se sectors. Think of it kind of as the, um, you know, the best of the best, right? The ones that are really performing well. So what I've done now is I've gone into my uh, top 100 stocks. Again, this chart is our weighted alpha, right? It's not a composite. And you would suspect that if you were looking at the best of the best, it's going to be trending upward. And certainly this one is. And, you know, we are making, you know, we're at our 52 week high. So it's, you know, showing us that these stocks are still carrying their momentum. And again, Kirkland pops right to the top of, you know, that story of the best of the best. Um, and again, you know, I can go through my technical, my performance, and my fundamental analysis, the presets that we already have. Um, um, but at this point now, what we could do is start going into our charts and looking at our charts for some more comparative analysis. Um, and one of the ways we can look at a lot of our different stocks in a very short period of time is our flip charts. And so I can click on our flip charts and um, go right to those stocks, okay? Now, what if this group is too large for me, right? There's 100 stocks to look through, right? To flip through 100 stocks every morning, that'd be a lot. So there are ways we can narrow this down. So I can go to my screener, my stock screener, and I, I wanna narrow down this group, okay? Um, and this is where my personal style, right? Your personal style. What things that are important for you when you start analyzing individual stocks to help you narrow down uh, this particular group, okay? Um, and so we could think about technical things. We could think about fundamental things. And there's a lot of different categories that we can pull these uh, qualifiers out. Uh, price history, uh, new highs, new lows, um, a technical analysis, bar charts, opinion, uh, financial statements, PE ratios, um, you know, growth rates. All all these are main categories, and inside of each one of these main categories, uh, there are a lot of different subsections of analysis that we can use. All right, so let's see if we can. I'm going to just show you some of the ones that I look at. And again, I'm not saying mine are great or better than anybody else's. I'm just giving you guys some ideas of how we can narrow down. So let's look at some technical stuff. Something very simple like, you know, let's look at our high price. Let's see what our six-month high price is. How far away are we from it? And, you know, are we approaching that? That would be a way... Um, to do an analysis, right? Um, another technical analysis that I like is called the MACD, and this stands for Moving Average Convergence Diversions. And um, there is, um, inside of bar chart, when you go into the technical analysis, actually, it tells you how that is created. But really, I'm not really going to get hung up in the value of the MACD. All I just want to see is a positive momentum. I want to see a positive MACD. And again, I like 20 day, just kind of this, uh, one of the values that you know, seems to be an industry standard. Um, and again, I'm not worried about the value of the MACD. I just wanted to be a positive. So I just wanted to see it above uh, zero. Okay. Now I could do some fundamental analysis as well. Uh, for instance, you know, I might look at market cap, right? What is the market cap of these particular companies? Maybe I'm looking at penny stocks. Maybe I'm looking at small caps, right, or mid cap stocks. I only want to look for those. You know, there is some seasonalities in the stock market between large and small caps, uh, for sure. Um, we could talk about it that maybe at a later date. Uh, but let's, for demonstration purposes, let's look at some larger cap uh, stocks. Okay, and then we could do, you know, some other fundamental knowledge. Maybe we would look at, uh, you know, revenues, 
right? We could look at revenues, make sure this stock is uh, performing or is making money or, you know, something that might, since I'm looking at a large cap group, you know, we could talk about earnings growth, right? Earnings share, earnings per share. And maybe I want to see this company's growth being continued from, uh, you know, quarter to quarter or year over year. So I'm going to pick quarter over quarter. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to set the bar low. Let's say a 15% increase from quarter to quarter. And now um, I'm going to look for my results. And now I've narrowed that 100 down to 41. Now I, I could add other uh, screeners to lower this down. But, if, you know, if, if you think about it, there's 5,000 plus stocks. And now we've narrowed it down to 41. I would hope that inside of these 41 stocks, uh, you could find some uh, trading opportunities. Okay, so again, I'm going to go um, to my uh, flip charts to help. Um, do this analysis. And so, John, yeah, exactly. How does flip charts help our analysis? Great question. And this is exactly how it's going to help us. First, it's going to give us that visualization, right? And this is the first one that was in our list. And, you know, I like looking at candles and, you know, a lot of folks like candles. And John, right? I mean, if you went into a textbook that said, what does an uptrend look like? This would be the picture of an uptrend, wouldn't it, right? A very consistent, strong moving market that kind of looks like a staircase, right? It's making impulse highs, it's correcting impulse highs, correcting uh, impulse high, right? Very strong. Uh, this would be a definite candidate for us to um, trade, right? Okay. Um, so what other comparative analysis can we do? So let's look at some tools that are inside of our flip chart. So we could, so if I right click on my flip chart, I'm going to go to something called the comparison chart. All right. All right, Nina. And this is what we're going to do here. We're going to bring our comparison full circle. Right. And what I can do here is I can compare this price, this stock versus other stocks or in this case, our S&P index. Right. Or if I wanted to, I could compare it to an ETF. Right. Or another stock. Right. It's one of its peers or its competitors. Right. And what I want you guys to do with this comparison here is I don't want you to get it hung up on, you know, where is the price of the stock versus the S&P. The blue line here represents the S&P. Um, you know, just because the S&P blue line is above the stock doesn't mean it's necessarily outperforming. Or if the stock is above the blue line doesn't mean the stock is outperforming. What we want to see is the price movement, how it parallels with the S&P. And. So you can see here that the S&P kind of was, was sideways, a little dip, and then it went up. What did our stock do? Well, it went sideways, dipped, and then went up. It's following along with the S&P. What we're going to look for to help us find entries and exits is when we get diversions. When the S&P is going up and our stock is going down, a cautionary tale for us, or when the S&P is going down and our stock is continuing to go up. So you can see here, our S&P continued to go up, but our stock went down. That's telling us that the momentum in this stock has paused and that uh, it's going to back up a little bit. It should maybe correct, or it could be getting of a new downtrend. So yeah, Nina's question is, how do we determine when to get in, right? So that's, it's easy for me to sit here and show you a stock that's up 100% and say, oh yeah, this stock was up 100%, but how do we get in? Or when do we decide how to get in? What we're going to look for is these diversions, this positive diversions. When the stock price fall, excuse me, the S&P is falling, Right, the S&P is falling, but our stock is going up. This is a positive diversion. It's telling us the momentum that the momentum of that stock is getting stronger, right? And it's outperforming. That's why we use those screening pages 
before to look for that positive momentum as we look for sectors and groups which ones are outperforming here's that positive diversions that's what we're going to look for this would be an opportunity for us to come in to this stock as this stock is gaining in price even though the s p is going down it's shedding the s p so to speak all right Again, doing that comparison, right? Again, here we see the S&P is going up, and what is our stock doing? It's going down. It's having a negative um, diversion. That would be a warning sign that the momentum of this stock has fallen. Now, it fell pretty hard in a very short period of time. So this also could give us a clue is, Maybe this stock or this group or this sector is falling out of favor. And so, again, we could go back into our chart under where it says more data, right clicked on it, more data. And I'll look under profile and I could look to see what sectors, what indexes and what industry groups this stock is in. And that could give me a clue that there is a sector rotation in this case rotating out of that sector and maybe into another sector and so i you know specialty industry machines or electronics would be one that would be a cautionary tale for us all right so i see a couple of questions here before i go to the next uh demonstration let's see if i can get caught up here okay the component is a full list uh flip charts yep um how do you determine target price to buy or given uh, a chart and why? Um, I would refer to you to look at my webinar on multiple time frame analysis and how we determine how to look at targets. Uh, we just did one on futures markets where we talked about futures trading targeting. We don't talk about it in, in terms of stocks, but a lot of those rules would be um, uh, comparable, Tom. Um, is there a way to do a comparison chart on a ratio of stocks uh, of an index? Yeah, I showed you that index. Um, right, and could you compare it to an ETF in a chart? Yeah, exactly. So that's what I was going to show you is, you know, instead of um, doing the index, right, we could do, for instance, the ETF, the SPY. And again, looking at that positive or negative diversions as it relates to and again if you have a very particular stock that's in one etf that would be a great way to look to see how your stock is performing of inside of that etf that it's part of as well okay well, some good questions today all right so another comparative analysis that we can do that um i'm kind of fond of is I've created a template and there's ways in the bar chart under support where you can learn how to do this. Uh, one is called, that I've created, is called the 20 day, uh, 100 day moving average. And what I wanna do here is, and again, this will go back to, uh, I think Nina's and Tom's question about finding trading opportunities for entries. Uh, this is where we're gonna put it all together, right? Um, again, the theory between moving averages is that as long as our moving average is positive, prices will have a tendency to stay above the moving average, right? So what I'm going to look is make sure that my 20-day and my 100-day are in a positive uh, manner. And you can see here on this one band, uh, we can see both of them are moving in a nice parallel direction. And that tells me the momentum of the stock is still intact. So what are we going to look for? Well, we're going to look for opportunities to buy um, on these particular stocks when price returns to the moving average at near or just on the other side of it, right? As long as my trend both of them are continuing showing positive. This is an opportunity to look for a buy in these particular uh, stocks, okay? We're going to either look for a correction. This is what's happening here, a correction, depending on how we define a correction move or how we define how we go along on a correction, or we wait for price to break back above that 20 day moving average, right? A confirmation that that momentum 
is back in control. That trend is back in control. Again, maybe we will find this through that uh, selection through our positive alphas, right? Now, um, again, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but last week or two weeks ago, we did uh, one on gap entries. And notice that those who went to that one, here we have a teeny little gap entry that would have given us a positive uh, confirmation or affirmation of our trend, and we would have gotten that entry. So what we're seeing here is two or three signals, a positive alpha, strong alpha, strong sector group, uh, a correction in the market, um, coming back to my moving average, and then a gap trade. One, two, three, four, boom, checklist, checklist, checklist. And that would be an opportunity for me to look for that stock, okay, either on that gap fill or when it uh, moves uh, above my trend line, okay? All right, um, so let's look at a couple other examples. All right, so here's um, one of the ones that I see a lot on the um, Robin Hood talks uh, chat rooms. And again, that's concept of looking for entries when price engages our 20-day moving average. Um, again, you know, if you are a longer-term trader, a lot of traders look like the, look at the 50 versus the 200. You know, if you are a momentum trader and you're looking at a shorter period of time, you're a day trader, you know, you maybe look at, you know, a week versus a month or one month versus three months. So it, it's it, the time frame you're going to choose is going to be relative to your, your strategy or your style. But notice that we did see a couple of nice entries here when price broke below our, our moving average. As long as our moving average is continuing to move up, then that is a positive momentum. I either wait for the correction, and how do I find the correction for my entry, or then I wait for price to pop back uh, above my moving average, that positive momentum. Uh, another one that is popular out right now is Peloton. Oh, excuse me. Uh, these purple lines are left over from one of our options. Um, I think this was when we did naked puts. Pa pardon me. Okay. And again, here, this is Peloton, right? So when would we have been looking for opportunities? Well, I mean, if you go back here, you see there was a lot of opportunities where we engaged our moving average, right? And then price popped back up, creating that positive momentum. And, you know, from, you know, maybe we weren't have been lucky to catch this stock back at $30, but certainly back in August, you know, this stock was starting to pop up on that alpha page. And there was two nice, opportunities to get in the stock and this stock went from you know in middle of august from about 65 dollars and it's already it's already doubled in a short period of time so again uh using this comparison analysis to help us find greater candidates and then using our techniques of how to look for trading opportunities um, let me see. There's a couple more. Which time frames would suggest? So, Simon, again, it's going to be based on what your um, is there more important? What is more important to you? A good fundamental? I think it's a combination of both, right? I, I certainly, if I'm a momentum trader or a technical trader, uh, you know, trend trader, I'm going to look at technicals. But you know, again, some fundamentals aren't great for a lot of these stocks, you know, especially in growth stocks. So again, it's going to be relative to the stocks. So I, again, I like to see uh, positive earnings and earnings growth um, and um, revenue. I want to see the st stock making money, that's for sure. And again, one of the ones I really like, because when I trade stocks, I'm really more about creating capital or wealth, and I really like dividends. I think dividends is a nice little a bonus uh, to trading. Okay, so before we finish up, let me just make sure there's no other questions. Okay, all right. So what did we learn? All right. Okay, what did we learn? Well. We're going to start at the, the higher level, the broader market, right? We're going to 
look at what sectors are outperforming the S&P, depending on our style of trader, what time frames we're going to look for. What we want to look for is this positive momentum. We want to see it outperforming the S&P in whatever time frames we're at. What we did notice, we do know from statistical data that groups or stocks that outperform or lead for six months have a greater propensity or prop probability of leading for another six months so that could be your kind of your tipping point you want to if you are a momentum trader short term you want to look six months and below if you are a long-term trader you want to look six months and, and above all right once we pick the sector that we like then we're going to drill down into the industries here's where we're going to use that alpha to help us find the stronger industry groups And then eventually we're going to look at performance, right? We're going to go down into that performance and we can narrow this down, our stocks down in performance, not only by the alpha, but when we get into the individual groups, we can start using that technical, that fundamental, uh, that performance the way to do that peer analysis, okay? All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed today's uh, seminar and that um, you got something out of this. I will remind you that um, there is a lot of benefits from being a uh, premium member, um, and there are a lot of the tools, some of the tools that I showed you here um, are part of our premium membership package and that it's important for you if you want to get all of these historical data and some more of the advanced uh, technical data especially in some of the other uh, uh, pages uh, that's part of our premium package and that that you can sign up for uh, free here you get a free 30-day uh, membership to allow us uh, to test out drive some of these uh, tools and uh, pages that are inside amendment so i would encourage you to do it and you know when you look at it in terms of dollar value you know a one-year subscription is about the same as a one month of um starbucks visits so i think you know it's well worth it in the long run okay um last i just want to um let you guys know that under our free webinars again, that they're all recorded and that you will have an opportunity to see this again. And that uh, join me um, two weeks, I'm gonna be off next week. Uh, join me in two weeks time and we're going to uh, explore um, as our continuing series, we're gonna go into debit spreads uh, in the options and that'll be uh, October 28th. Look for the sign up in the next week or so uh, to take an opportunity to come in and watch. Uh, we'll go through the debit spreads in the options section. So um, let's make sure I got all the questions. Jean, do you have anything you would like to add before we say goodbye? I have a number of people asking whether all the things that you showed us today are available. Uh, they, they are available if you just visit the site. A lot of those industry ranking pages, you can uh, go directly there and take a look at the data. If you want to take advantage of the stock screener, as John was showing you, then sign up for a, either a free membership and we just need your email address, you set up your own password, or the Bar Chart Premier, we do offer a free trial, and with Premier, you do get a whole lot more. You can save multiple screeners, you can save uh, unlimited watch lists of stocks that you are following. Uh, you even can have us automatically send you saved screeners result at the end of each day uh, as, as an email. So lots of advantages. Uh, we have lots of tools available for you on the website. And John, thank you for the information that you presented today. It seems as if uh, a lot of people are already saying thank you very much. It was a great <laughs> presentation. So Again, all of you out there, thanks for attending. You will get an email with a link to the recording a little bit later on today. John, thanks again. 
Uh, best of health and good of all tradings, everyone.